here, descendant of Pandu, by dint of his personal power, Hiranyakasipu, being situated on the throne of King Indra, controlled the inhabitants of all the other planets. The two Gandharvas, Vishvavashu and Tumburu, I myself, and the Vidyaras, Apsaras, and Sages all offered prayers to him again and again just to glorify him. And I'll read the translation for text 15 also. Being worshipped by sacrifices offered with great gifts by those who strictly follow the principles of Varna and Ashram, Hiranyakasipu, instead of offering shares of the oblations to the demigods, accepted them himself. The Asuras sometimes become so powerful that they can engage even Narada Muni and similar devotees in their service. This does not mean that Narada was subordinate to Hiranyakasipu. Sometimes, however, it so happens in this material world that great personalities, even great devotees, can also be controlled by the Asuras. So, the very first indication that something is out of order is given in these first three Sanskrit words. Jagor Mahendra Shanam Ojasa. That due to his personal power, while sitting on the throne of Indra, he had arranged for others, had forced them actually, to sing his own glories. So who is that him, of course? It's Hiranyakasipu. So Hiranyakasipu, who is not one to be glorified. You know, we don't find that the uh, Bhagavatam is filled with the glorious pastimes of Hiranyakasipu. Filled with the glorious pastimes of Krishna and his devotees. We have mentioned here our preceptor and Acharya, Narada Muni himself. Narada Muni, we see it all throughout all the different devotional literatures, particularly the Bhagavatam. Narada Muni's right in the thick of it. Whenever there's something going on, Narada Muni's always there. I mean, we take for granted very casually. I've been involved in the mainstream workplace for a little bit of time now. And you look at the lives of the people around you, and these people really, I mean, they don't have any sense of control of their senses or, or their tongue or, or, you know, I mean, ugh, pretty abominable activities, you know? I mean, they can be nice enough, pleasant enough people to have a casual conversation with, but you examine their lives and there's no austerity. And what is the austerity that we perform? We actually perform austerity with such uh, 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 commitment that we don't even think about it. The four regulative principles. No intoxication, no gambling, no meat eating, no illicit sex. Uh, on a codicy, fasting on a codicy. You know, many devotees do a full marriage all a codicy. Don't even think twice about it. Oh, it's a codicy. Okay, no food today, no water. But the results come. The results come in the way of the Lord's mercy on us. The results come in the way of our own personal advancement. The results come in the way of our personal convictions to stay in devotional service. At any rate, even to persons like Narada Muni, these things happen. But by performing the different types of austerities, different types of uh, devotional practices, these strengthen our commitment to continue on. What was that famous quote? Prabhupada said, don't be surprised who stays, uh, who goes, be surprised who stays. So all of us here, we've been practicing devotional service for some number of years. That means we have conviction. That means we have gotten the result of our austerities. Hiranya Kasipu, back to this point of him with his uh, not sharing the oblations, I was thinking how this is the perfect demoniac mentality. Me, my, and I. You know, everything is about me. That I am the enjoyer. There's that famous verse in the later part of the Gita. I'm the enjoyer. I'm the proprietor. Everything centers around me. And in this way, I can be very satisfied and happy. And this is the, the mood of Hiranya Kasipu. His mentality is just the opposite of those of followers of Lord Chaitanya. I was thinking, you know, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya's entire mood was to give love of God. Just to freely give love of God to everyone. And what was the result of that? Lord Chaitanya's love of God increased. Now, of course, that's an interesting thing to say because Lord Chaitanya is Krishna himself. How can Krishna's love of Krishna increase? But that's a whole other esoterical, philosophical thing. From the practical point of view, the more Lord Chaitanya gave out love of God, the more Lord Chaitanya's love of God increased. And the more that increased, the more he wanted to give it out. 
This is a very interesting mood of Lord Chaitanya, and this is the mood that Srila Prabhupada was in, and this is the mood that we, as followers of Srila Prabhupada, should be in. This is an example of how we do not keep to ourselves as Krishna consciousness, we openly share it. This is, this is how the devotee thinks, let me give, whereas the demon thinks, let me simply keep for myself. Indra and Narada Muni are both mentioned <clears throat> in this particular verse. I've had the very good fortune recently of uh, listening to uh, Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. Go to sadhusanga.com, download the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, and listen to this nectarian book. It is the most amazing pastimes. In this first volume, what's happened is that this is written by Sanatan Goswami. So Narada Muni is searching for who is that personality, who is that devotee that has received the mercy of Krishna? Who has actually received the mercy of Krishna? So he's going in these different ways. So he's at this uh, assembly of sages at Prayag, and this one uh, very wealthy businessman comes and arranges for a clearing to be made and uh, uh, sets everything up and constructs a, a mandap and very nice gardens and arranges for prasad and distribution to all the sages and sadhus there very elaborately and at great expense and feeds everyone. <coughs> and then they request him, now you please take your prasad and he takes his prasad and then he, okay boys, let's pack it up and go. No big to do, just he comes, he serves the Vaishnavas and so Narda says, oh, wait a minute. He says, you are certainly the recipient of mercy of Lord Krishna. He says, actually, no. He says, not me. So what, what do I have? You know. But there's a king in South India. And in his kingdom, everything is so wonderful. Everyone is so satisfied. The earth produces grains even without being tilled. Now, he is the recipient of Krishna's mercy. So Narada goes to meet this individual, this king. Uh, he goes to this king and the king says, actually, I, I'm not really the recipient of the mercy of Krishna. If you want to know about the recipient of the mercy of Krishna, the demigods. Krishna is uh, associating in the heavenly planets with them and uh, Vaikuntha, Lord Vaikuntha is there. He gives all these descriptions about how it's actually the demigods and the demigods are headed by King Indra. He is the topmost personality, so you should go and see him. So Narada goes and he greets King Indra and so he begins to glorify King Indra as the recipient of Krishna's mercy. You've gotten so many blessings. And Indra, you, you know, generally speaking, and I say this with a straw between my teeth, but the Bhagavatam kind of paints Indra as a loser. You know, he's always blowing it. You know, he's got eyes all over him because luckily that was a place where whatever was all over him. And, you know, he's uh, causing uh, trouble for the residents of Vrindavan, and he's stealing horses for sacrifice. I mean, you know, he's always doing something silly, something kind of stupid and dumb. You know, and of course, there's always something that gets worked out, but, but this portrait of Indra is completely different. Narada approaches him, praising him, glorifying him, and Indra takes a very humble position. He says, no. He says, do you not know the scripture? Do you not read the Shastras? Have you not heard of my activities? Have I not left this kingdom many times and gone and caused so much difficulty? I even tried to challenge Krishna in Vrindavan, and he had to lift the Gover down hill to save his residence. He says, I am not the recipient of Krishna's mercy. You do not want to glorify me. Amazing pastime takes place in which Brahma and Narada combined to put some kind of yoga maya on Krishna and Balaram from Dwarka to make them think they're in Vrindavan and Garuda gets involved and oh, it's just incredible. Anyway, they, the Yadavas, say, no, 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 no. The person that's got the mercy of Krishna the most is Uddhava. Uddhava is that personality. So it concludes that yes, Uddhava is the person that has received the mercy of Krishna. So it's a very, very nice book. I highly recommend you read it or download it and listen to it, whatever. It'll certainly give you some joy. As a matter of fact, there are two benedictions offered in the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. One is offered, Krishna Chan, at the end of the first volume, Narada is speaking with Krishna, and Krishna says, take a benediction. Take many benedictions. Take all benedictions. But he says it encouragingly like that. And Narada says the following thing, he, three benedictions. He says, O Krishna Chandra, may I never become jaded by your mercy, love for you, and the bliss that comes from serving you. Nice nice request. Don't let me become jaded. 